My name is Cynthia Shamagalingan. Today we're making crab fried rice from my new book, Rambutan. We're going to start off by making Sri Lankan curry powder, Sri Lankan roasted curry powder. This curry powder is from Jaffna, which is where I'm from, which is right up in the north of the island. And it's, it's kind of a dry climate, and we eat the spiciest curries on the island. But this one, it's heavy on coriander and on roasted red chilies. I say in the bit like medium hot red chilies, but you can use whatever, whatever you like. And if you like it spicy, you can always amp up the chili and that will be fine. We're gonna start off by dry roasting the spices. And we're gonna start off with coriander, black pepper, cumin, and fennel. I just roast them all together at the same time because they're all quite, quite hardy spices and they should take about the same time before they start to burn. You can already smell the coriander. Coriander is like, we boil it. We like boil it in um, water when you're ill. So I feel like it smells like something your mom gives you when you're sick and she wants you to get better. Okay, so that's basically, I mean, I feel like that's basically it. You just want to kind of cook it until it starts to be really fragrant, which is already happening. The thing that I sort of was always feel with the book is like, or with Sri Lankan food, is if you can toast and make your own spices, it really doesn't take that long. And then the quality of it is so incredible. You're kind of like, what was I doing before? Why did I ever buy it, you know, ready-made? It's ridiculous. And then for the chili, we're gonna add a little bit of oil because it just hits a bit different when you cook curry leaves and chilies in oil. You don't want to put too much oil in because you want this to be a dry curry. So don't overdo it. You can always add more as you go. It's going to kick off a big stink, so open all the windows. Just be be aware for a few minutes. This is going to this is going to make you cough. There aren't that many things that make Sri Lankan food really distinctive and special, but curry leaves are sort of like the they're like analogous to Italian foods, olive oil. Like you, they're kind of a fundamental pillar of the food, the cuisine. And you have to get fresh. Dried won't do. Dried kind of lose all their flavour. Uh, so if you can track them down, they um, they make all the difference. Okay, so you want to go you, you want to go quite hard, but not too hard until the chilies have gotten some colour. Some of them have started to go a little bit black. That's okay. And then we want these to cool down a little bit before we smack them in the grinder. So when all the chilies are cool, you can get to grinding. This is quite a lot, so you, I'm going to have to do it in batches. Also, be careful with touching the powder and then touching your eyes and stuff afterwards because it's going to be really spicy, but we're just going to go a bit at a time. So we made all of this curry powder, but we're actually only going to use this amount for this recipe. Like, don't worry about having excess because it keeps um, in an airtight jar. I keep it in the fridge, but you can keep it on the shelf and it will keep for at least a month, if not longer. So to make the crab curry, we're going to start with tamarind. Tamarind is um, what people in the north of Sri Lanka use to add like acidity to curries. You can get it in a pod, you can get it in a jar, you can get it in a kind of block uh, shape. I like the block the best because it's the most consistent. Um, and I never use the paste because it has preservatives in it that change the way it tastes and give it a kind of um, metallic almost flavour. I like to soak it in warm water and then let it sit for a while until the water cools down and then you can just squeeze it and extract the seeds. The good stuff is the pulp but not the seeds so you kind of want to squeeze it out a little bit and then you're going to discard all the seeds but keep all the water basically. You want to get it so that it's kind of thick and syrupy like this. Well, so crab fried rice, I think, is a relatively recent, it's like a modern Sri Lankan food. It's not particularly ancient. There are a bunch of Sri Lankan Chinese fusion dishes, and I don't know if it came from uh, Ch Chinese people who came to live in Sri Lanka or Chinese traders who came to Sri Lanka. But what I feel like it's about is using up leftovers. Um, and it's a great way to use up yesterday's rice or yesterday's curry. One of the things about about Sri Lankan fried rice is it doesn't really belong to any one community. I would say that every community in Sri Lanka eats fried rice and, and kind of claims it as their own. So Sri Lankan food, I feel like has a couple of, there's some, like several kind of key components. One is we use a lot of coconut and coconut milk in the island. Dairy is quite expensive in Sri Lanka and coconut literally grows on trees. So Sri Lankan food curries are usually emulsified with coconut milk, which makes it light. This is basically the base of the curry. And then we're gonna add everything but the crab meat.
curry powder. <laughs> this is optional, but this is this delicious curry uh, spice mix called meat powder, which has got fennel and nutmeg. It kind of adds a sweet flavor. I'm gonna add that now and then coconut milk. I'm gonna add a little bit more curry powder because I like it a bit ex kind of extra spicy, but you can adjust to how spicy you like it. And then we're gonna add uh, salt. We're gonna add rocket. In Sri Lanka, you add the leaves of a moringa plant and they're kind of peppery and they're full of like delicious medicinal flavor and they work really well with crab. It's hard to come by here, so I just use rocket instead. The crab's going in. You don't want the crab to cook for that long because it's already cooked. So you just, and if it, if, you, if it has too long, then um, you ruin it. So I just like to kind of coat it and give it a couple minutes for the curry flavors to affect the crab. So now we're gonna make the fried rice. Any leftover rice that you have for this, this is leftover basmati rice, but you can use kind of anything that you have in the fridge. There's no real set rules. You can um, do what you want. I mean, some people like add soy sauce, some people don't. It's just like a, it's, yeah, it's up to you. I'm just scrambling the egg so that you just have egg pieces in it. And then the rice. Seems like a lot of rice. Trying to get it crispy. We're trying to get it to take on some of the flavors of the, of the curry, um, the curry leaves. I'm adding like about a tablespoon of Japanese mayo. I don't know why Japanese mayonnaise tastes better. It just does. So I'll just let this cook for a bit and I'm gonna chop up some spring on, some scallions, some spring onions. So now we're gonna add the curry, basically. If you want, you can add a bit of extra chili flakes here now um, because the chili and the curry powder will have dialed down in, in hotness. And also meat powder, and that um, at the, also at the end kind of takes it into a different dimension, but it's optional. And then you want to finish with some peanuts. The peanuts are optional too, but they add a little crunch and something fun. And I like to finish with the scallions. It's time to eat. Really spicy and filling and like comforting. Mm. You can really taste the fragrance of the curry leaves. I feel like the egg and the crab kind of have a similar consistency, but the mayo really pulls it together. It's, yeah, super comforting. It reminds me of kind of late night after a few drinks in Colombo having a fried rice on the way home. For the recipe, click the link below, but also it's in my cookbook, so you should buy it.